Today we're going to take a look at the new Codename One GUI Builder and I'm just going to recreate the creation of this simple login form that's from the Codename One sign-in demo. Uh, so let's start with a fresh canvas in the new GUI Builder. Uh, I've, I've skipped the part where I created a new form in NetBeans and then opened it up in the GUI Builder, but uh, I have a clean canvas and it's working in the sign-in demo project so the resource file has some of the images loaded that we're going to need uh, for example this sign-in with Google, sign-in with Facebook buttons those are images that are already in the resource file same with this codename one logo so uh, we're gonna start out by placing a blank label that I'm gonna use as a guide uh, because I wanna have a little bit of margin on the side here and I'm just going to use it as an empty item that my other items are going to line up with. So I've got a label here and I'm going to make it five millimeters of inset on, either, on left and right and I'm going to change the text To just a blank space, not completely blank, but just a space, so it'll still have a little bit of preferred size uh, that is helpful for the uh, layered layout to work. Okay, so this we we won't actually see anywhere; it's just there, and I'm going to use this throughout to line up other items, uh, the left and the right. So let's start out by dragging our codename one logo, and this is going to be a label. I'll just put the label there, then I'll pick the image from resource file and we'll scroll down until we find the, oh there it is codename one.png and we'll remove the text so that we've got our logo now I'm going to uh, remove this fixed inset you can see this strut here meaning that this inset is fixed 33 millimeters from the side but if I hit this lock it's going to change it to an auto inset so on both sides I have auto insets and when both sides are auto, it will tend to be centered. The same would be true if I were to change the top to auto. Now this would be both vertically and horizontally centered. Now, if you want to see the difference between that, so right now I've got an actual inset uh, there. Because I've dragged it, it's automatically added an inset of 25% back. I'm going to resize my canvas, and you'll see how it doesn't remain centered. It's, it remains 25% from the right and it's not going to be centered for all sizes. And when we're designing a form we really need to think what happens when it goes into a different form factor. So I'm going to change this to an auto inset and now we can resize and it will remain centered well until it doesn't fit. Uh, but it'll remain centered right through. So that looks pretty good. I've got it 11% uh, from the top. It doesn't really matter uh, at this point. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the text fields out. Let's take another look at our finished goal. So we've got two text fields and a button, and then we've got these two buttons at the bottom. So let's drag the text field out. Okay, so there's our first text field. And... Notice as I drag it close to the edge of where our hidden label is, I get this guide. It's actually going to automatically link it to that guide. And so if I get it close enough, within one millimeter, it'll snap to zero. This is because I have auto snap turned on right now. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. I'm going to drag it, and there, it should snap to zero. So I've got that text field. Now I'm going to copy and paste. I did a little... Uh, command C and Command V to copy and paste it and I'll get this pretty close and it should snap and this is going to be lined up with the text field above. Now in case you haven't seen a previous demo the way this layout works is it's, uh, it links components together. It's not absolute positioning so on each inset here there's the size of the inset shown here which is zero millimeters and I can change it to pixels or percent uh, but if it's millimeters is uh, probably the best to use for small uh, sizes. Then there's this little link button. Now when I hold it over here, it'll 
Notice how it highlights my hidden widget at the top there. See the, the little yellow highlight at the top? Uh, this is because it has automatically linked the left side of this component to the uh, left side of that top element. So if we were to resize this top element, it would... See, I can actually do that here. It's actually going to resize the other two text fields because they're linked to it. Okay, I'm going to change this back to 5 millimeters. So my text fields will return to that. And uh, zero millimeters, zero millimeters on this side. You can see the link here. So it's it's linked on the left. And let's see where the top is linked to. So the top automatically linked to the text field just above it. And this is because of the auto snap. I've moved it really close to it. Now I could have the top uh, linked to a different place. For example, I'll click on this and just remove the link altogether. And then my text field is going to be anchored to the very top of the form. This is problematic, as you'll see in a second here. See, as I resize the form, now it's moved the top text field up, but the bottom text field is not moving with it. Uh, this is because it is no longer linked to the top text field. So what I can do is I can drag this link. I'll press and drag, and I'll drag it back to the top text field, and now they're linked together. Now if I resize the form, those text fields are going to move together. And a lot of the trick of uh, laying out uh, an interface with this new GUI builder is uh, knowing how your elements are linked together. Now there is a feature called Smart Insets which is a bit experimental. We're looking at improving. For now I usually keep it off. It's, it can be a little intrusive because it automatically uh, selects what it thinks your links should be. Uh, so I'm going to leave it off for this entire demo and we're going to be explicit about which things we want linked together. Now for this top text field, we see it's actually a fairly large uh, inset. We really should uh, link it to the label above it so that when we resize, you'll notice as I resize, it starts to go over top of our label. So I'm going to drag it like that and now when we resize it, it will always stay a fixed, well, distance. Right now it's in percent. We, uh, if it gets smaller, as I, oops, as I drag it, you'll notice it changes automatically to millimeters. Um, anything below, t uh, I think it's five millimeters, it'll uh, choose millimeters as the unit. As it gets bigger, it changes to percent. This usually works, gives you the best results. You can explicitly change it if you like. So we'll do it, well, actually five, four and a half. Or we can set it to exactly five. How about? So it's five millimeters below that image. So now that we've got our, our two text fields, let's drag a button onto the canvas. And we'll line it up. So it's also exactly lined up. Oh, one millimeter. Let's have it exact. Zero. That should snap. Now, this is a... Uh, so no, now we have the two text fields and the button laid out there. And we just have two more buttons at the bottom. I'll drag, a, drag the button onto the page. And for this button, this is going to be our Google button. So we're going to select an icon from the resource file and you'll see we should have, uh, there's the sign in Google and we'll remove the text and to get rid of the blue border around the button I'm going to just change the UID to label. I, we probably want a specific UID specifically for this type of button but uh, label will do. Uh, and uh, the Facebook is going to have similar properties so I'm going to copy and paste this button just below it and uh, we'll pick a different icon. Facebook. There it is. And uh, we want this to be centered. So we'll remove that. And it's also, notice it automatically linked to our top, or actually to one of the text fields, because where we placed it, it was pretty close to the text field. But we want this to be centered in the whole thing. So I'm going to select this and remove the link so it'll be centered in the entire form. And now I'm going to reposition the Google just above it. 
and I'll do the same thing with it. Actually, I can, well, I'll do the same thing. Oops, that actually added the inset and we'll remove it there. So that should be centered, except this one also automatically linked up and that should give us the results that we want. Now let's resize the form a little bit, just to make sure it resizes the way we want. Oh, we'll notice a, a little bit of variance in the uh, how the text fields are uh, and, and button are working. We want them to remain lined up. So let's see what happened with this one. So right now, this is an auto inset. What we want is zero. There we go. And that should give us the results that we want. And for this, just for a little bit of symmetry, we're gonna set the inset, the Facebook one, at five millimeters exactly, so it's the same as the edge of the text fields. So at this point, we've got, and your, your phone is gonna be, you don't really have to worry in this particular form, I'll be careful not to size it like this, but in most phones, it'll be, uh, it'll be like this. I mean, what happens, there is a problem if uh, we're in landscape mode and it can't quite fit it, we might want to do a bit of a different layout in, uh, in that case, uh, but uh, we'll deal with that uh, in another time. We'll, we'll fix this to only work in uh, portrait mode for now. Let's uh, set up these text fields. And uh, right now it says text field, but we want it to say username. And we'll set the name of the field and the, we'll give it a hint. Oh, actually we don't want the text to be username. I want the text to be blank and the hint to be username. So it'll say username when there's nothing in there, but when they start typing, it'll replace it with the actual uh, content that they've typed. And finally, a hint icon, uh, we'll choose from the material icon set. Uh, this will be a, oops, what happened there? Material icon. Okay, there's a person. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll do the same thing with the password field here. Name, call it password. And the hint, password. And the icon, the material icons. We'll choose a lock. That looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to save this, and let's take a look at this now in the simulator. So that looks pretty good. We also wanted to, oh yeah, got to change the label of this button to sign in. Oh, this is, I don't know why that's. Okay, and that is our form. Uh, in the next video, uh, we can look at adding some actions to this. And uh, for now, uh, this is just a demonstration of how to use the new Codename 1 GUI Builder with Auto Layout. Thank you for watching.